So this is Lucas, and well. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so when you ask people, is, is that too loud? Okay. Uh, when you ask people what quality assurance is, you get answer like this. So that's not quite true. So what's really quality assurance? Sorry? Yeah, but <laughs> it's when you have to blame him. <laughs> so the goal of quality assurance is to improve the quality of Debian as a whole. Uh, as opposed to just in working on your package. Uh, the quality assurance team is not really a team. It's more like a central place to discuss stuff. Um, and we uh, hung out on Debian QA and the mailing list Debian QA at least at Debian.org. So what do we do? Uh, first thing is we maintain the PTS, so the package tracking system. Everybody, everybody knows the PTS, I'm sure. Uh, DDPO, which was mentioned by Tincho. Uh, so that's a develop Debian developer package overview, and also several other tools. So what's really important is that uh, we aim at building tools for everybody and not just for one team. So I'm, I find it a bit uh, sad that Tincho built this nice tool just for the Perl team without talking to the QA team in general because probably uh, we could have helped him uh, and made his life easier. Yeah, so what's really important is write your tools for Debian. It's cool that you write tools that help everybody, but don't write them just for your team. Uh, we also develop tools uh, to run uh, archive-wide checks, uh, and we then we do the checks and we do the mass box filings when it's for real issues only, most of the time. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the advantage of talking to the QA people about that is that usually those people are more experienced uh, about running such tests, so you don't start filing bugs about things that are not I real issues. So that, that acts as a filter. Uh, one other part of what we do is that we take care of orphaned and neglected packages. Uh, we are supposed to maintain the orphan packages. Everybody knows what an orphan package is? Okay. <laughs> um, and we also have a sub team that tracks inactive maintainers. So that's a missing M MIA, so mis missing in action team. Uh, so I'm just, well, when I submitted the talk, it was supposed to be a both. So I'm just going to present a few new things that you might not know yet. And then we can, then, then the goal is really to, to chat about uh, QA. So the first thing uh, I, want think I, want, I wanted to talk about is uh, BAPAS. Uh, it's, uh, the problem is that uh, there are many packages that are neglected in Debian and uh, it's difficult to determine which are those packages amongst the 10,000 packages that we have. So the idea is simply to import uh, dif different information about packages uh, in the same uh, script and then build a table that uses a scoring system like a, like a spam scoring system uh, to detect which package is really suspicious and should be looked into. And another part of the tool is that uh, it allows you to say, I, at this time, I took this action. And for example, if you, say, if you file the bug saying, should this, should, uh, this package lo looks neglected, should it be orphaned? Then the tool removes, uh, reminds you 30 days after that, that no, you should orphan the package. So that just allows to um, keep track of what you are doing and to process many packages at the same time. Oh. If you have que questions about that, don't hesitate to, to ask. So, uh, yeah, examples of uh, uh, searches that we have are, are packages which are, which are very buggy, so with many bugs, um, or neglected, neglected and useless, uh, or orphaned. And we use uh, different information, such as uh, the number, the, the cool stuff that is not done elsewhere, I think, is the number of uh, NMUs that the package um, uh, add because a package which, which was already NMU'd 
four or five times, it's very, it's very likely to be totally ne neglected by his maintainer. Uh, something else that's new and not totally working yet, but we are really close to getting it in production state. Uh, it's the Ultimate Debian Database, or UDD. So it's a Google Summer of Code project. Uh, the student is Christian von Essen. Uh, it's a German guy. Uh, I co-mentor it with uh, Stefano uh, Zaki Rolli or something like that, <laughs> Zach, <laughs> and uh, Mark Brookschmidt. <laughs> was, was that right? Yeah, Zach is fine. Okay. <laughs> And the goal is actually similar to what I just uh, presented about Bopas. The goal is to gather a lot of existing data on Debian in the same SQL database. So then you can run uh, cool SQL queries combining uh, lots of different data sources, which is not at all possible at the moment. So for example, you can get a list of really critical bugs sorted by Popcorn, or the list of co -main or maintainers, including co-maintainers, who the problem. No, out. Uh, but a list of maintainers or co-maintainers with the most bugs. Uh, so the current status is that uh, we have s a lot of dat data sources already imported in on a regular basis. So either uh, using current tab that runs frequently, or uh, the, um, the updates of the packages and sources file are triggered by SSH. So it's really fresh data. And we imported the uh, packages and sources file for Debian and Ubuntu, uh, the popularity contest for Debian and Ubuntu. Alors, oh, why Ubuntu? Simply because we want to be able to run queries such as uh, packages which are popular in Ubuntu but are not packaged in Debian. Um, we also imported testing migrations. Um, so we know when a package last migrated, uh, how long has it, has it been trying to migrate. The history of uploads, uh, so we know when packages get were uploaded, by whom. Uh, the bugs, from the everything from the BTS, uh, I mean the, um, only the summary for each bug, not the bug log. Uh, of the list of orphan packages, uh, Lintian and Carnivore. So that's the everything listed here works, uh, but it's really easy to import other stuff. Uh, Philip Kent uh, said this morning that he will work on importing uh, when I build. So currently this runs on uh, udd.debian. Um, oh, Carnivore is. Uh, Carnivore is, um, uh, is a tool that is used by MIA, I think, to, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it allows to link different email addresses or identities to the same person. So you know that uh, this email and that email are actually the same person. Um, so you can access it from master.debian.org using this command line. This works. Uh, and it still has to be moved to a Debian.org machine, uh, but uh, we'll work on that when everything is stable enough that uh, it's really completely usable. You can already run queries, like I will show you. And there's a wiki page with some links also. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, one interesting query uh, is, I, I blogged about this, maybe you read it. Uh, it's a popular package which are not in testing because they were removed, uh, for example, because they were RC buggy or because they haven't migrated yet. So uh, for this, we can combine the, the sources, uh, yeah, the sources uh, table and the popcorn uh, by source package table because popcorn usually use, uh, normally use binary package, but we have a table with popcorn for source package using the max number of installation over all the binary package of each source package. Uh, which I just lost my, my screen. <laughs> um, so that those are the results. So you can, and this kind of things is really hard to do currently uh, without uh, UDD. Another query, uh, the most popular orphan packages. 
So uh, we have a table called orphan packages that has the list of orphan packages uh, with, uh, uh, with a type field, which is uh, whether the package is currently orphaned or IT-aid. Uh, so someone intends to adopt it. And then, uh, so again, you can link it with the uh, popcorn source tables to get a list of popular orphan packages. So here are the results. <laughs> so the most popular ones were IT8, but that's still. I think Imlib is going to be removed. Well, that. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> Mark Bushmit is not at DebConf. <laughs> Mark Bushmit feel bo feels bored, so he wrote SQL queries. <laughs> I tried to format it cleanly on the slide, but <laughs> <laughs> I gave up. So this gives the maintainers uh, with the most Lintian errors, and the winner is <laughs> <laughs> So it's not the number of unique Lintian errors, so maybe there are just lots of duplicates, warnings, or errors. So these so are just examples. You can run lots of different stuff. And uh, if you have ideas, just talk to us. And so uh, what you can do uh, about quality assurance first, uh, talk to us, join Debian QA uh, and the mailing list. Uh, look at the list of orphan packages and adopt them if you care about them. There's a, uh, there's a script in dev scripts called uh, WNPP alert that lists the, the orphan packages that you have installed on your system. So that's a good way to know uh, if you are using something that is orphan. Uh, you can work on improving our tools. So there's lots of bugs filed, uh, filed against uh, qa.debian.org on the BTS. So just have a look at the list, file new bugs so Zach can fix them. Um, and uh, think about uh, mass bug filings to improve the quality of Debian, uh, but only about real issues, of course, because we don't need more, more um, useless bugs. And talk to us about them so we can help you because we you are used to that. But so this is supposed to be above. So I really would like uh, a discussion. So there's a list of topics that uh, I would like to have your opinion about. So first, the orphan packages. We currently have more than 700 orphan packages in Debian. That doesn't look really right. So what should we do about them, seriously? Because we, w I don't think that we can just continue to ignore them. Well, we could just do as if they didn't exist and, well, we could ag aggressively remove them. We could continue to ignore them. Or we could maybe split Debian into a main section, <coughs> which is supported in universe and supported section. I don't know where I got this idea from, but. And <laughs> 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 um, something else that we could discuss that you might have questions about is status of MIA. So the machine in action team that tracks inactive maintainers. Um, something else is making the QA team more attractive. Uh, it's, uh, it's a really cool team. There's a great atmosphere. Everybody that is uh, in it, I think, uh, really likes to uh, talk and, yeah, with QA people. Um, maybe we could integrate this into NM, like, uh, Andreas? Can you switch on? Yes. Who is actually, for you, a member of the QA team? Is this a reader of the mailing list or subscriber of the mailing list? Or who is member? There's no, f well, um, there's no really formal membership. You can, if you, if you join the Gen QA or the mailing list, then you are a member of the okay, QA team. That's so that's really. <laughs> Yeah, there's no, but there's a Unix group uh, named QA that is only used to control access to the QA website and the PTS, no, the PTS is different. <coughs> it's the same group, okay. But that's, the Unix group is just a uh, technical uh, thing, there's no, yeah. The usual answer to that question is that everyone is part of the QA team. 
Yeah. I think we all should work on QA stuff and track several things, not just in our own packages, but if we stumble upon problems in other packages, we really should get rid of that impression that there's a single maintainer for a package and do QA work in a more broader approach. Um, yeah, the, the, the other side uh, of that story is, of course, that, um, that um, many of the tasks uh, of, uh, of the QA team um, are very repetitive and um, you have to do them on many packages, but you have to gather some experience uh, on how to, how to do them, but you can only do that by actually doing them. So um, everyone that has the courage to go to other maintainers and tell them um, maybe you should offer on your package, it looks very bad in shape and stuff like that, uh, is a member of the QA team, um, but you will notice that you have to uh, you have to um, have the the courage to make um, errors at the beginning, uh, errors of judgment, and uh, you will be uh, accused and uh, <laughs> yelled at, <laughs> and uh, but uh, you will get better at spotting which packages uh, are probably so, uh, yeah. So the thing is, th th that's the reason that uh, everybody and nobody is a member of the QA team because uh, it's the, the task in, in itself is not, most of the tasks are not very hard. You ha just have to do them. Um, but um, there are also, <coughs> very um, difficult, on the other hand, in that uh, a lot of uh, factors can affect the package and sometimes it's better to just leave it alone uh, because the maintainer is working on it, even if it looks bad in the archive. Um, I'm not sure entirely what point I'm trying to make, but... <laughs> 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 but I, but I hope it was still useful. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, wait. Uh, I agree that uh, many tasks of the QA team are uh, and socially difficult because you deal with people who are already too busy, unresponsive, and it gets. It's often it's easy to get frustrated about that. So you have to do other things um, besides that to not to get totally burnt out. Uh, but there are also uh, things that are purely technical. And doing them inside uh, QA team helps you uh, be more efficient and makes the task less repetitive. <laughs> For example, when I started filing uh, my FTBF, mass FTBFS bugs, I did it uh, uh, mostly manually. And now I have scripts that make, me, uh, that make it really easy to file uh, uh, 60 SC bugs in one hour. Or <laughs> Half an hour. So, <laughs> and you can use it. You can they are written to be useful f to everybody. So, uh, if you are want to do a mass bug filing, uh, use those tools. So that, for example, you don't have to manually copy the bug numbers to a separate list because it's just uh, insane to do. You can just import all of them using user tags to a file and fill in the file. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's all small tools, but really useful when doing that. Uh, you want? You want? Yeah. Well, Sean, okay. Um, that's it's not only uh, talking to maintainers about when their packages are might need more attention. It's also working on the infrastructure. Like Lucas has shown some uh, really spectacular things that he has done in the past, and there's a lot of more things to do. The, so joining the QA team does not necessarily involve uh, talking to other maintainers if you don't like that. <laughs> it's more like you do need to talk, of course, with your fellow QA members or who, with whoever is working on several tools to enable maintainers for themselves to work on the packages better. If there's more tools so that maintainers can see 
what the state of their package is and what uh, would be the best investments of working on their packages, that is also QA. And the point that Frank was going to make was, of course, that alcohol hurts your brain. <coughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, part of the point that Frank made was that it's really sort of repetitive work and it's uh, getting annoying and boring at times. But I would like to really encourage new maintainers or people who try to get involved into Debian to join the QA task force because usually it's not uh, hard work, but it will get you very much visibility and a good track in the history for your new maintainer application or things like that. I wanted to come back to uh, the, the first point on the slides, the, the orphan packages. Um, I, I really think we need to get more aggressive in removing them. I mean, we have got more aggressive over the last few years, but it's still a very um, yeah, slow and tedious process. But I mean, there's... Um, there's of course uh, the the human side of the problem that will not go away, that people actually care about these packages. They just don't have the time or don't feel that ha they have the time to main actually maintain them. So uh, if you remove an orphan packages, it, it, uh, it can be that uh, you annoy many users. Uh, some of them might be uh, where we uh, might even be Debian developers, and uh, so, um, but it is just uh, an unmanageable um, task at the moment. So um, it it can't continue like that. And I think uh, the sooner people realize that, the sooner w they will stop complaining when we remove packages. And um, I mean, there there are many uh, there are tools out there, uh, so that if you really care about the package, you can uh, resurrect it. I mean, you have the versions uh, in the stable release it if is if it was ever released, and you have things like snapshot Debian net, and hopefully uh, at some point in the near near or not so near future that will become an official Debian service that. Would uh, make it uh, would make it um, easier to justify removing packages because they would still be available. At the moment, we only have this, uh, yeah, mock on uh, FTP master, but it's a bit difficult to get there and stuff like that. So I think um, having snapshot DBNet being an official service would make life uh, easier for remo uh, for tasks that um, involve removing packages because we can just say if you want to resurrect it, it's all there, just uh, download it and upload it uh, as maintainer. Um, but the current situation just doesn't work. What sort of threshold are we going to put on for that sort of thing? Are we just going to say that the orphan packages with the most bugs, the lowest popcorn score, just get dropped at every release? Well, problem is that uh, orphan packages sometimes have reverse de dependencies and you can't just remove them be without breaking uh, maintained packages <laughs> elsewhere. So it's really a tricky problem. But yeah, starting by not releasing uh, all orphan packages without reverse dependencies, which have been orphaned for a long time and have a low popcorn. Historically, it's always been the um, at least one of the maintainers of the reverse dependencies mm. who's had to take on the orphan package. Mm. I know Thomas had to do that with GNU Cache. He took on a, a, a long list of mm. reverse dependencies uh, um, just to get maintain GNU Cache itself. 
and it's, it's a big burden for those who have to use it, but equally it's an incentive to, to see whether there's better code that they can mm. convince upstream to use. Mm. Yeah, but someone has to do that, so <laughs> some, someone has to maintain them. So. Um, this may sound a bit um, a weird question, but what's the problem with having orphan packages? I mean, well, what's we I mean, surely it's not a good thing to have. Um, it's better to have a maintained package than an orphan package. But mm -hmm. how is better not, not to have it at all than having it or orphaned? Well, that's uh, that's the point. We could just continue to ignore them and that consider that it's fine. But the uh, problem is that uh, we s are supposed to support them. Sometimes they are buggy, but nobody knows until a user installs them. And that's still a problem, I think, uh, if we are supporting them. And see, well, uh, well, we are, as we are releasing them. No, we can, uh, we are, I'm not saying we should include them in stable releases, but oh, okay. just have them in unstable, why not? Mm. We're not supporting well, we can, yeah, them in any official way, but yeah. they're just there. Until yeah. someone um, comes up and uh, maintains them and puts them to testing. Well, currently they are released. Currently they, they are it, in Yeah, the they should be removed from testing, but yeah. why yes, do we remove them from the archive? If you remove uh, a package from stable, you just basically remove it for the users, which means you remove it. It's not available for the user. Uh, there has been raised a valid point on IRC discussion channel about that popcorn uh, uh, stats shouldn't be the only criteria for, for these packages, especially for some corner cases like accessibility or other special areas with special impact. You won't get ever any great popcorn stats for that, but that doesn't mean that those packages aren't important. <coughs> especially with respect to accessibility, they are very important to some specific users. And it's hard to get people, it, it's very few people really interested in those because they probably need it themselves. And uh, it's hard to get uh, people involved into working on those, unfortunately. So just popcorn that shouldn't be the only criteria to kick mm -hmm. packages out. Yeah, sure, but well, it doesn't, it's really um, politically incorrect to say that uh, you can't uh, value accessibility more than uh, science, for example. And if people care about science and people don't care about accessibility, uh, that's life and maybe, <laughs> yeah, that's another social is issue to address and I'm not sure that uh, the right way to address it is just to make as if uh, those package were maintained when they are not. Well, uh, when talking about removing packages, uh, I can see a, a problem here in, with this situation because although they are still available at uh, snapshot, People usually don't know that they were removed because of some reason, like they were found on maintenance, and not and nothing very grave with them. So they can actually get them back and restore them. So I think it, we need to create a list of those packages that are removed so that our users can actually see that the packages are still somewhere and they don't need to package them right from the scratch. So it's basically that. Actually, no, uh, if you are subscribed to the PTS, you receive a mail when the removal of a package is requested. So you, if a user is subscribed to a package that he cares about, he knows about it. Uh, I think he, he meant that if you want to package uh, a software, mm -hmm. that you have an easy way to look if it was ever packaged before, mm. and so that you can actually resurrect it. At the moment, it's, uh, you have to go to, s uh, you, you can first check if it was ever in a stable release, and then you have to check whether a snapshot maybe has it from some testing or unstable version. 
but it's not very trivial. So I think that the PTS lists packages that were ever in Debian. No, no, only that are currently somewhere in the archive. No. Uh, well, but there sometimes there's some missing information, and the also another problem is that the PTS only knows about source packages, so uh, it is not something pretty easy. I'm sorry for repeating my point, but we have unstable and the backtracking system for that. Just leave them there. We have the backtracking system, and if someone wants to work on the package and uh, make it to fit for a um, um, stable release, then he can look at the bug tracking system and fix the RC bugs and take care of the package. Yeah, but well then you run into problems like uh, people not caring about releasing Debian, and uh, that's another, another issue yeah. because some lots of people are just happy with using unstable because they will never uh, work on getting them into, sta into testing or into a stable well release. In that case, what does it hurt to have it there? If, yeah, well, well the you use unstable, but you yeah. there is a package that's orphaned, if it's removed, you, you wouldn't have it at all. So what's the difference? Actually, this is a bit incoherent with the release pra practices, which says that if a package is not meant to be released, it should not be in unstable. Mm -hmm. So this is what the release manager is actually saying. And keeping packages in unstable, which are not meant to be released, is a problem for release purposes, because it can get in between transitions and stuff like that. Well, the problem also is, is that it adds noise to the list of RC bugs. So you look, uh, look at the list of RC bugs and see bugs like uh, this package isn't stable, but should, is not meant to be in a stable release. So you have to skim uh, all those bugs. And does, does that mean that every orphan package is per default RC buggy? We could introduce that policy that every uh, orphan bug is well, we have the per, problem per of default RC. Yeah. And it, it looks like the only way to get people to maintain orphan packages is to threaten to remove the package. <laughs> so that sh could be a way to fix the problem. Yeah, just to even underline that, even just keeping the packages in unstable still has a problem because you're sapping QA people's time dealing with packages that nobody ever is going to have any interest in maintaining, or at least for the foreseeable future. It may be useful to, when we remove archive those packages somewhere like we currently do with snapshot.debian.net um, and maybe perhaps make something official for those types of packages so that if somebody later decides they want to come back and do it. But keeping it in the archive is just wasting people's time. Um, and again, when you remove, it makes people sit up and notice, oh, I actually use this package. Maybe I should be maintaining it. Um, perhaps even announcing to users that, hey, these packages are going to be removed because nobody's maintaining them. You know, they've been orphaned for n days, whatever. Um, if you want to keep them around instead of packaging yet another uh, DNS or IP over DNS thing, maybe you should consider taking over an orphan package. Um, yeah, that's, um, I mean, uh, as was said before, the, uh, the current problem is that the whole infrastructure is uh, targeted at so that every package should eventually go to testing. There are a few exceptions which we accept, but the whole infrastructure assumes that. So that's not an unsolvable problem if we want to change, if we want to change that, but it is a current problem. Um, so the question would be, do we want to change that? And I, I don't think we want, because even if we change the infrastructure so that uh, those packages don't uh, clutter, uh, don't uh, yeah, um, need so many resources like they do at the moment uh, in terms of uh, that they um, show up in all these lists of uh, packages that need work and uh, that uh, Brittany uh, tries to um, handle them and stuff like that. Um, I don't think, uh, even if we change all that, that we want to have them uh, in the normal archive. Um, because every package uh, needs resources, um, and if we just let them uh, pile up, uh, like, um, 
uh, they will need ever more resources and um, I think we can spend those better and if you uh, if you really care about the package then you should provide those resources and that means uh, maintaining them um, take uh, and taking care of them well I guess uh, all those I guess we can agree if we aggressively remove them from unstable they should be somehow accessible and actually there is a source mark on FTP master but to my knowledge it's not yet mirrored somewhere so if this would be mirrored I didn't see it on Michael when I just looked, but maybe it's there in the FTP tree. So if the packages would be actually uh, accessible to reintroduce them into Debian and not to redo all the work, I think it would be easier to just remove them or lower the barrier instead of relying on snapshots, uh, Debian or uh, Debian Net, which is not even an official service, I guess, and which stopped mirroring currently. So, uh, another pr problem I, I see uh, with keeping orphaned or in general b b buggy packages uh, in Debian, even only uh, in unstable, is that it, um, uh, it lowers uh, the, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the quality judgment uh, that users have of Debian. Uh, if one package is even out of 10 uh, is problematic for them, uh, is buggy, uh, they see the buggy packages much more uh, than the uh, non-buggy ones. Uh, they feel them more, uh, an, uh, uh, an impression uh, that they, they have of the general quality of Debian uh, g uh, goes down very fast. Well, in some idea, uh, well, another way around is to, for example, keep all the or, you know, all the orphan packages out of testing, and during the re the release cycle, one can try to adopt them or well, either adopt them, release them, or decide in the or or try to decide whether we re in that package really should be in stable or not but make sure and, um, and then unblock the package and so you can enrich testing and be prepared for the release. That way we could remove several packages, uh, reduce uh, the workload, and in the same way keep the packages around for some time so that they can still be adopted or whatever. Uh, I mean, nobody is suggesting that we just just remove orphan packages after a month or so. I mean, okay, I've suggested that I think, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it were special cases. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, uh, we need, it is important to find the balance between. Uh, keeping them long enough so that potential adopters can notice them and keeping them short enough so that they don't cause too much work for the QA team. Um, but it is my experience that uh, successful ITAs are very fast. And everything that is a bit slow, uh, that and most of the ITAs that are just a little bit slower, like more than a week or so, never get anywhere. I mean, there are exceptions for some packages that need really much work or that need a new upstream version that's completely different, stuff like that. But uh, you can see if you look, uh, if a package is orphaned, there's two general ways how it goes. The one way is there's an ITA uh, in less than 24 hours and uh, upload in less than a week. And then there's the other case where, j where it just drags on and drags on um, and maybe there are ITAs from some people that don't 
the, that aren't uh, Debian developers, and then nothing becomes of that, and stuff like that. But uh, most packages can be uh, classified as one of those two cases. So um, we shouldn't wait too long, I think, because it doesn't actually help the package uh, to be adopted. So the consensus is that we are going to remove um, adopted, uh, sorry, uh, often packages aggressively. And I think um, the point Raphael made was that uh, we should compile a list of packages that have been previously in Debian somewhere on um, QA Debian org, maybe with the latest description, latest um, version, and tell people if you want to have this package back in Debian, go to snapshots Debian net or ask someone to uh, get you the latest package from somewhere that that should be easy and um, well the list should be really be useful and if it's visible so people can say uh, yeah it really was removed at some point and that's why and maybe even a pointer to the removal bug and that would be a, a nice service for QA to provide and yeah oh, FTP master because basically that's only FTP master stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, this removals.txt uh, is just too long and yeah. it's not readable. So um, I really like the idea of making a policy of making an orphan package marked as RC buggy. And I think that will resolve a lot of problems, right? It will preclude from propagating to testing. And if it affects the reverse dependencies, then it's up to the person who is maintaining the reverse dependent packages to fix it or find an alternative solution. And that actually, you know, then you, you it, it doesn't matter is if it drags for a long time and it's sitting and unstable, it will never propagate to testing until its status changes, right? I was actually, I don't know, if people want to further discuss the orphan issue, I was, I was more planning to talk about UDD. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think it's a very good idea. What I started just thinking about it and potential uses, I don't know how much of a package metadata you are importing, but it seems like if by importing all metadata, you can come up with very exciting new checks. Like right now, Lintian, as I understand it, does only static checks, but you could do din dynamic checks, for example, you could, if you import information about what files are in the package, you could check for duplicate files, or you could check that the version which people are building, the library version people are building against is actually available and unstable, eliminating cases like people building in a dirty truth or something like that. You could probably even do an automated check for the cases where there is a freeze in effect and people wouldn't be, would be warned to not upload this stuff right now linking against the particular library version and things like that. So are you doing it or is well, it something you're planning to do? It's a Google Sum of Code project that, 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 that started two months ago. So uh, it was a bit uh, hidden currently, not really public. Uh, we are going public with this uh, now because uh, Google Sum of Code ends now. And um, the, yeah, if you are interested in importing more data, just contribute and uh, join, join the Gen QA, talk about us, and you can, we can give you access to work on new, new, new import scripts. And yeah, we are going to import a lot more data. The, the goal for the uh, Google Summer of Code project was to, was to build a, a strong base that we can build, uh, now that we can build on it. Uh, yeah. For example, uh, Raphael uh, discussed with Raphael the idea of using uh, UDD for DHS, the Debian watch uh, checking system, because we could import some files from each package into the DB, like Debian watch or Debian changelog, and then uh, have a look at uh, those files automatically. So you, you won't need any uh, file backend uh, for DHS anymore, basically. idea was um, when I've seen that there are uh, 700 packages QA maintained, you as a maintainer will not browse this list regularly. But
But if there would be a very simple tool that, that just scans the list of packages which are installed on your computer or so whatever and sends you a monthly email, you, you are using uh, package A, B, C, which are not... Oh. <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah this, is, this should be default. Yeah. Yeah. Because I had also using a package and, and I've got from the release manor, maintainer, there was no interest in this package since 2004 and this, this was just not true, but nobody noticed. So, but sorry for repeating. Um, there was mentioned that uh, packages that get removed will put into some snapshot archive and people uh, have the possibility to revive it from there. This hopefully will also include all the bug reports that were filed against the packages before it got removed. Well, the, the bug reports are archived and could be an archive. Yes, if but, needed. but it should be linked with that information so that people will be made aware when they revive the packages. It probably should reopen all the bug reports that were open at the time the package was removed and should check if it still apply. I think we could just document that, have uh, something like resurrecting packages in developer reference saying uh, unarchive all bugs and well, look at the archive bugs for this package when you resurrect the package. I'm not sure that we need a script to do that uh, automatically. Uh. Yeah. Um, in the interest of not duplicating work, we should probably talk a bit about, now that we have Jeroen here, uh, how to uh, use the stuff that uh, he wrote in Mole with the UDD, because uh, I think for for some of the imports um, for data that uh, requires a lot of work to import, like uh, like these um, like file contents and stuff like that, it would be uh, very useful to use uh, the Mole stuff because it is uh, yeah actually designed to do that, and we could then import the data from mole and not directly so that we can reuse that code and uh, me and uh, uh, Christoph Berg uh, have uh, looked a bit at it and are getting familiar with it so that mole doesn't have a single maintainer anymore so that we can hopefully improve it uh, in the future. <laughs> Well, I don't know what other things, uh, but why don't we uh, schedule another talk or, s or a meeting, actually, uh, so that we can continue talking about all these topics, because now that we have still five more minutes, uh, well, we won't finish anything. <laughs> so I don't know if we can use the other room or, <coughs> or what. Well, not right now. Okay, I, I take care of that, of uh, asking for another scope. Even if we don't use it for one hour, it doesn't matter. Mayan? Um, we haven't talked about MIA maintainers yet. Yeah. Um, do we <laughs> think we have a problem there? Uh, I'm not really familiar with MIA, so I, I don't, I'm not sure uh, how well it works, how well uh, request incoming mails get processed. And, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't well, know there's two sides of the issue. Um, one side is um, processing the known cases, and on the other hand, I'm, I have the impression that we have lots and lots of maintainers who just maintain one single package, which in some cases doesn't need another upload, but in some cases could use another upload, and um, do we have too many maintainers? Um, is that a problem? Do, we, do you want it like that, or what's the general impression there? I agree that uh, uh, we have well, we have quite a lot of maintainers that only maintain one package, and usually it's really painful to deal with, with them because sometimes they are active. I mean, they, are, um, they, re they answer to emails when you mail them, but they don't do anything about their package and they think that it's, it's okay, and they are not aware of Debian policies. Uh, they just do it in their corner, and that's really, well, on one hand, it's nice to have them uh, participate in Debian. On the other hand, it's difficult to deal with. So. That's, that's a complex issue, I think. And 
I'm not saying at all that it's a, it's a problem for people just maintaining a single package. It's just that it's a lot harder to actually tell if they are active or not. If they're, mm -hmm. if if one someone has ten packages or more, it's very easy to ta tell if they they are active or not just by, by just by looking at the bug counts or so. But um, yeah, for for MIA stuff, it's probably always welcome if someone else is <coughs> someone more is um, working on pinging maintainers and asking them what they are going to do. Actually, maybe we could make a difference between maintainers that maintain a lot of packages and maintainers that just maintain one or two packages. Because if they just maintain one or two packages, then we can orphan them using uh, BAPAS, for example. We don't need to go through the MIA process for them because it's easier to just say, OK, vi you, um, this package looks neglected. Uh, I will orphan it in 30 days if you don't uh, fix the problems. I was going to suggest that I think we need to be careful to, to focus on what the actual problems are and address the actual problems. Um, I, I think, for example, that we could make much more use of NMUs into the delayed queues and um, assertions of, you know, this is not well maintained, we'll orphan it in 30 days or, or whatever the right threshold is. Because I think sometimes we have people who are actually you know, reasonably engaged and are good people, and we don't really want to drive them away from the project. But we shouldn't allow their periods of inactivity or their attention to other things instead of that package to keep us from fixing the package. And so I just it, we, we need to be a little bit careful sometimes. The, the problem isn't necessarily that we have people who maintain only one package. It's that we have packages that are poorly maintained. And we should not be afraid to do the things that are required to fix the packages. Whether we can fix the people is you know, a whole separate issue. OK, I think we are done, uh, out of time. So well, I will take care of scheduling another slot for this. And uh, I think Andreas uh, notes. So. Thank you. Thank you.